How's it going my lovely Death Disciples? I am the Shattered Reaper and today we're going to continue our Dating Star Let's Play where last we left off we had just gone into so much being pranked so hard like ugh I mean most of them I couldn't really control but at the same time that last one like I just walked right into that one I should have expected it, but I didn't. And it's like, ah. And that was all over Grill Beast. And uh, we did finally get there. So, like, yeah, I got just. Sans just played me like a fiddle. It was like, how could you? But it's also hilarious. It's all fuck, so you know what? I, I forgive you. And, um. Uh, then we also met Undyne and Alphys in with the Echo Flowers and uh, got into a little bit of a friendly spy with all the anime moments just being all like, the ground is cracking, it's just JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. I mean, I was thinking, does it could it be like Dragon Ball Z, but then again, it would have taken like 20 episodes just for the first punch to actually make a move, or actually for a fist to be made, so like, that ain't gonna be accurate. But, yeah, that's pretty much all that happened, and it was very nice. And now we shall continue on our journey. So, uh, it looks like we found the telescope as things appear, so let's go on. <clears throat> you traverse deeper through the caverns. Water droplets trickle onto your face, cooling your cheeks. Investigating the room, you came across a telescope. How convenient. This must belong to... <laughs> looks like you found my telescope. Oh! Sand slides in next to you. Oh. So he doesn't just walk up next to me. He slides next to me. That can only mean good things. Where he came from, you have no idea. But that makes it all the more interesting. <laughs> hey, girl. Thanks for finding this one. By the way, I knew it was here. I just figured I'd nap a bit before finding it. Now, you're probably wondering what I'd be looking at with a telescope. And that's a reasonable thought since we're underground. Oh, oh gee, well, I couldn't tell it if you, if you, it, ugh, no, I already ruined it. This is why he's the fun master. I had it and then I ruined it. But I mean, yes, that, I don't know why I didn't think about that until now. No stars around. But did you know the ceilings are glowing rocks? You can find some of those rocks on the walls, too. Amazing. Yeah, if you want to hold my hand, I'll show you. I feel really cool. Well then, don't mind if I just do. You extend your hand, waiting for him to take it. Okay, kid. Here it is. And when he does, you feel how warm and soft his mitten is. That one is completely on me. I... You fooled me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me thrice, what the fuck am I doing? Fool me thrice? Do I even know? Rumbling of air escaping between your fingers accompanies the cacophony of whoopee cushion parts. You pull away from Sans while he clutches his ribs in laughter. Somehow you're both surprised and not. Get all your dope on tease. The echo flowers continue to share the sound with each other like immature children on a playground. That's right. Just continue to laugh at my embarrassment. But eventually they get bored and the sound fades, leaving only the drip drop of water. Sand speaks up. Waterfall is actually really nice. It's pretty much like a cave. Except the rocks on the walls and ceilings are the stars of the underground. And if you pay close attention, a soul can hear passing conversations. Some monsters even make wishes. For everyday things like a nice hat or someone to play fetch with. Others wish for deeper, personal things. 
Company. Price. Strength. Confidence. Freedom. That last word leaves with an exhale, and the echo flower simply repeat it. Once they're done, he continues. Anyways, you want a lesson? Maybe we'll hear something juicy. You stay still, trying to hear something distinct from the static. Sans looms over an echo flower, examining each petal. A warm sensation tickles your soul. At first, you only hear the ever-present static. But then, you hear gossamer whispers. A wish, maybe? I... wish... It grows louder and louder. I wish... Until finally, the flower surroundings you echo the words... Uh... Surrounding you echo the words louder and loud and clear. I wish I was the legendary Fart Master! You pull away, your head snapping in the direction of one sense, the skeleton and his mischievous chuckling. <laughs> Why are you giving me that look, kid? You don't think it's serious. It's almost secret, secret, triple secret code word serious. Almost. I have other code words that are way more serious. But if I told you outright, they wouldn't be super secret megalo secret code words, would they? Hmm. Can you tell me a secret code word? Well, wait a sec. I can't just tell you my secret code words. Also for people I trust my soul with. Maybe if you're a good enough fire master one day I'll tell you. You drive a hard bargain there. You drive a very extremely very erect hard bargain. Even harder than the innuendos I'm referring to. It's pretty damn hard. Sam Snorth's trying his best to hold in his laughter while you powdered him. Yeah, see, this is just how it works. The, re the relationship dynamic, he's the pun master, I'm just the innuendo bitch. I am just, that, that's basically, actually that's just the dynamic with, in whatever relationship I am. I'm just the innuendo, I, I'm just the innuendo bitch. <laughs> he then shifts his gaze back to the ceiling. <laughs> to be honest, I'm, oh, that, is, that is pretty good, damn it. How did I not? That's pretty good. This isn't the best place to make wishes. I'd show you where exactly, but I don't want to bore you. Besides, I should get going. You're making me late to my other game. Good thing I know a convenient shortcut. Shall we? Sand shuffles along towards the entrance to the next room. You follow behind until your senses are swallowed. When the world returns, you're greeted with the sound of glasses clinking and the chatter of soft conversation. Sans nudges your side, tilting his head toward the tables. Yeah, let me get you settled. Sans leads you to an empty table and you take a seat. A reserved card with the name Sans adorns the center along with a candle. My my, just for me. I'll meet up with you soon, kiddo. There's something I need to take care of first. And he's gone. You sit there a moment, hands feeling the smooth, silky tablecloth. A spotlight hits the stage at the front of the restaurant. A tall, lanky robot claims the light and beams reflecting off the metal. Hello, darlings and gentle darlings. Sorry about the dreadful wait, but you know what they say. The anticipation can be just as delicious sometimes. After all, tonight we have someone you all know well. As much as I know you hate for me to leave the stage, I am happy to introduce our very own hilarious Comic Sans. I'll see what you did there. The audience erupts with claps and cheers. And you can't stop smiling as none other than Sans the Skeleton takes center stage. The flamboyant robot wings. Knock their socks off, Sansie. 
the robot exits stage right, and Sans walks up to the microphone while he peers into the crowd. <laughs> hey, uh, the audience greets him back with a chorus of, Hi, Sansy! And Sans returns the greeting with a wink. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everybody. <laughs> you know, I thought about canceling today. I was so bone tired. But I think you'd have a bone to pick with me if I didn't make the night humorous. He's already on a streak. The crowd is a mixture of snickers and groans. But the atmosphere is a joyful one. The smiles on each monster's face are testimony to it. Don't worry, there's a ton more where that came from. One of the audience members shouts, A skeleton? But Sand shakes his call too easy. Now we're at MTT, guys. So it's more of a meta time. And so it begins as the laughter of the audience drowns the remaining silence. Metaton sticks out his leg from the side of the stage. My, my, upon using my name. Oh, yes. Don't you be trying to take away my role in this world. And then he pulls it back. But then again, Metaton already had it first. I'm just here, but who also happens to be a bit of a slut. And Sans continues his routine. Now, before I get into more jokes, there's a serious matter we have to address. Did you know today there was a kidnapping at Toriel School? <gasps> Collection of gas scatter throughout the crowd. Sans chuckles into the microphone to calm the concern. Don't worry, everything's okay. The kid woke up. That is pretty good. That is good. The audience breaks once again, the initial shock sparking into laughter, electrifying the room like, yeah, that is amazing. Speaking of which, I started my day pretty late. Surprising, right? Well, anyone who knows me intimately knows that I'm great at bed. I'm the innuendo slut. I know exactly what you meant, even if nobody else does. Don't think I don't see what you're going for. The back and forth goes on throughout the set. And the laughter never dies for too long, bursting back to life again. And again, after each punchline. The smug grin stays fixed on Sans' face, regarding the crowd as his playground. I'm not even reading what is being said, I'm just... That stare, he's just boring into me and I love it. And it's a playground he knows exactly how to play in. Eventually, Sans reaches the end of his set. But the rowdy laughter of the audience seems to be far from over. He raises his voice above the noise. Well, that's it for me. You've been great. Have a sensational night. I mean, you could certainly say that those easy puns are just grating. The rain of cackles is met with a thunder of applause. End of the blink of an eye.
he isn't there anymore. But the laughter still is. And it continues to ebb and flow, crashing against the walls and back into the ocean of the audience. Soon enough, the laughter fades back into conversational chatter. And you finally have a moment to your thoughts. <sighs> the events of today play a silent movie in your mind. Some parts stand out more than others. But before you can dwell any longer, someone pulls you from your referee. Hey, yeah. <clears throat> You're looking kind of lonely. Shit. Guess I'll just have to join you. You're still not over it even though your bit is done. You are dedicated and I like that. Sans takes a seat at the table sitting across from you. Thanks for treating me to dinner, by the way. Wait, what? Nah, I'm kidding. Luckily, I have a special reservation because I performed tonight. This place is so uppity. Even the silverware has to be reserved separately from the table. I don't even get a mint. You're just serious? You have to... I don't understand how anybody could do that. You place your hand on the table and feel around. No silverware. Not even a plate. All it's here at the table is just you and Sans. Just you... And... Sans... Blushing intensifies... So, what do you think of the underground? It's pretty great, isn't it? The monsters down here, the love they possess, really makes this place feel like home. You can see it in the way they act. They really do care. Take Toriel, for example. Toriel really does care about everyone. Humans and monsters. She's doing everything she can to bring home to all the monster kind. And she's compassionate towards any humans that fall down here. Undyne is pretty fiery, isn't she? Even if she's not the captain of the Royal Guard anymore. Now, hold on a second there. How do you know I'm, I've met Undyne? How long have you been following me? She still keeps that passion on full display. After all, she's trying to keep everyone strong and motivated. Especially, Alphys really tries her best not to lock herself away in her lab. You tell that something went heavily on her mind. But she's pushing her research efforts in order to bring monsters back to the surface. And the virus? Well, we already talked about that. My brother is the coolest. He just wants everyone to like him. They all seem fond of you. You've done a certain tenderness in your soul. I like that about you, kiddo. All the you. Hey, you've been really quiet. Have I? <laughs> Why don't you tell me what's on your mind? You try to steady your breath and you clasp your hands underneath the table. Okay. I am bone hard for you, okay? Well, that's what I have to say. Right now, the tablecloth is the most interesting thing. You focus on it while your mind wrestles with the idea of even speaking. Okay. We're just going right in for it, aren't we? Going all the way. Either going all the way or don't go in at all. Go big or go home. That's how I'm doing this. I love you. You take a deep breath, lips quivering, chest burning. I know it's only been a day, but damn it, if Disney princesses can fall in love after a day of meeting their significant others and have and, and probably working out, why not this? You try to swallow, but your thread your throat is too dry. You could say it's bone dry. Your mouth opens, a silent eye that fears to be heard. Damn it, bitch, don't you fucking cock block me here! Sans lowers his voice, giving you an encouraging nod. He's giving you the nod. He's encouraging you to say it, damn it! Just say it, you fucking bitch! Don't fucking say it, I swear to all the gods I will choke you and I will sacrifice you in the name of Aphrodite for being a dickless bitch that won't even bother to say what you want. 
Well, really what I want, but you know, it's my needs, damn it! You know? A tiny bit of, co of coaxing fills you with determination. Yes, yes, give me what I want. Please. Please! And the words become a whirlwind. I would have loved being able to just hear the words myself, but you know what? This works. This works. Now, we see what happens. He has the surprised look, but he's not blushing. Is this a bad sign? I feel like it's a bad sign, and I don't know how to react. Falters, but his eyes tell all. The pause of time between now and what's coming next is too much. Okay, um, I do not have a shot anywhere, uh, so how do I deal with this? Your soul sinks. Then he speaks. Hey there, buddy. It's flattering and all. I don't see how you could be that in love with me. Especially considering we've never met before. Damn it, don't lie to me like that! I know how this works! Don't think I haven't seen how Undertale works! You think I don't know how to work? I don't think. But I think you have. You're just not admitting it. Love like that needs a bit more. That doesn't mean we can't try this again. He gets up from the table and you feel yourself being pulled along with him. But the thread of a feeling snaps and you sail back into your seat. The skeleton stuffs his hands back into his pockets. It's only now you notice how cold your soul feels. So many words left unsaid. So many actions left undone. Why couldn't you act on any of it? Take care of yourself, kid. Someone really cares about you. As it turns out, the only cock block was myself in the end. And it's because I went too early. Fucking damn it. You can only sit there as Sans takes his leave. And he disappears once he's far away enough. But you swear as he was walking away, your soul could still, f still feel him glancing back at you. Now, why would that be? The world fades away. God damn it! And a certain smiling flower pops out from the ground. Golly, you must be desperate if you're looking for love from Smiley Trash Bag. I swear. Okay, do you want me to get the fucking blowtorch out for you? Because I will use it! I mean, just because I have not killed anyone else doesn't mean I won't kill you. <laughs> you really thought that he was going to love you back just like that? Love at first sight? You're damn right, it happens! Just, it, it happens. Don't question me. You idiot. Your soul must feel so broken. No, he said it can happen. Just needs more time. So you know what? I'm willing to be patient. Just because it didn't happen the first time doesn't mean it won't happen. At all. Aw, don't look so upset. Your best friend Flowey knows you don't have to be alone in your pain. After all, you're not the only one with a breakable soul, aren't you? I'm just saying, love is an option. <laughs> I know what it means. And I'm not falling for it. You think I'm some easy little bitch that can just be easily convinced to just do some terrible shit just because, ooh, I happened to go through one breakup. I am not that easy. I am not that desperate, okay? I am the product of pleasure and lust. So you can simply just go ahead 
and take your de own desperate little self somewhere else because I am not going to be sharing in your paltry, desperate, shitty little, little, well, my insult got ruined, but you get what I mean. I'm not desperate, but I know you are, and I'm not going to sink down to your pitiful little level. So sorry, darling. Actually, you don't, you don't even deserve me calling you darling as an insult. Darling is too precious of a word. Let me tell you something about that skeleton. He doesn't leave his soul vulnerable. I would know. I've tried to rip it apart. Hasn't worked out. I know he won't bear his soul to me. After all, why would anyone let their guard down around someone without a soul? But you and your soul, you're different. There's a trait beyond your determination that I can't quite place. I bet you anything that smiley trash bag noticed it too. Can you call him that one more time and I'm getting the flamethrower? And if that's the case, there might be a chance for you. You just might let his guard down. You know that second chances exist in this world, right? Yeah, I do. So why would I want to hurt him if I know that second chances can happen, hmm? Hmm? Why would I want to do that, Flowey? Hmm? You basically just confirmed what I already thought. It can still happen. So why would I want to hurt him if I know that it could still happen? And even if it doesn't happen, that's fine. So that, so thinking about that clearly and logically, why would I want to go with your stupid, dumbass plan that requires someone else to do it for you because you're too much of a pathetic ass to be able to actually accomplish anything, Flowey. So sorry that you have to rely on someone else to fix your own problems, but that's your problem, not mine. So, why are you still here? It's as if you didn't understand a word that I said. Do you understand language? If you don't, step aside and leave, okay? The ability to start all over again. The power to reset, if you will. I wonder how you use it. Oh! Bam! Well, okay, so I guess that kind of shows that, hey, do not admit your love outright, especially to someone you just met. They will probably be all like, what the fuck are you doing? You, we literally just met. Why are you already falling for me? And again, that wasn't exactly how Sam said it, but you know, people can react that way. <laughs> so, um, but I guess we're just gonna leave this here, so that was interesting. Very interesting. I definitely do plan on playing this a little bit more, obviously. So we're just gonna leave it here, so I hope you all enjoyed the video. Give that like button stab if you can. Subscribe if you want more Death in Your Life. Be sure the bell is tolling for the Until next time, rest in peace. Bye! Enjoyed today's video? Well, there's plenty more for you to enjoy here. And if you also want to support this small channel, then there is also my Kofi, which is available, as well as a Twitter thread that gives you my commissioning info. And if you'd like some traditional art or literature, feel free to DM me on Twitter. Thank you for enjoying the video and for your viewership.